Welcome to Team to Team, presented by Cigna, proud partner of your Arizona Cardinals. I'm Darren Urban, and joining me today is Bill Voth of the Panthers.com. And Bill, we got a big matchup here this week with the Panthers and the Cardinals, kind of uh, far removed from uh, the glorious playoff matchups of uh, Ryan Lindley and Carson Palmer. And, and do you go back to the Jake DeLome days? I mean, were you around for that game? I do. I was I was just right when you said big matchup, I was going to ask you what your definition of big was, considering um, at least where the Panthers are at these days. Uh, yeah, I go I go back to 2005. Okay. Um, but well, yeah, that that Ryan Lindley game, that was uh, that was a heck of a game. Um, that that then, was um, not a great game. Somehow in 2015, the Cardinals actually um, uh, doubled down with that one. And uh, it didn't really uh, that trip wasn't very good for the Cardinals. Well, again, that's why I'm bringing up Jake DeLone, because that, there's there's still that one. Yes, so. there was that one back in 2008. Yeah. Larry Fitzgerald was a young man back then. That's right. We all were, Bill. We all were young th those days. These days, um, speaking of young, uh, you guys have a young coach, Matt Rule, who comes from the college ranks. Obviously, the Cardinals just did that the year before with Cliff Kingsbury. I'm wondering how that kind of transition has gone to bring in a guy, which obviously we know very well on our end, what that's been like for a guy with no NFL experience, no real NFL experience coming in and, and, and taking over the job. Yeah, I mean, I think you can you can see there's some layers of okay, this guy's this guy's a college coach, and then you wonder, I wonder how these professionals are going to deal with some of this stuff. Um, but then also, it's just the, the Panthers needed to get new and, and innovative. And I don't know if, if this is like you know, it's not a Chip Kelly situation where it's like hey, let's tear everything up. Um, but the Panthers needed to do something different. Um, so he's brought in uh, completely new blood. Um, obviously, um, letting Cam Newton go was an organizational decision. It wasn't just it wasn't just Matt Rule. Um, a lot of people around this area haven't still aren't dealing well with that, and it doesn't help when Cam's playing well uh, in New England. But this is what Matt Rule does. He starts over. He hits the reset button. That's what he did at Temple. That's what he did at Baylor. Um, the early days, um, you, you need to have patience to get through them. I think it was, he had two wins his first year at Temple and one year his first year at Baylor, uh, and then built up those programs. The Panthers are trying to build up a program right now. It works in college. Is it gonna work in the NFL? I don't know. They don't know, but that's what they're trying. It's not about winning right now. It's about building and building and building. I'm not, I don't know if it's gonna work in the NFL. If it does, then I think you'll see a lot of teams copy it. Well, one, one holdover that you do have uh, is Christian McCaffrey. Unfortunately, he's, he's hurt right now. Kind of where has that put this team? Obviously, they're coming off a of victory, so that's, that's a good thing. But McCaffrey is such a large part of that offense. How are they dealing with his absence? Uh, they deal with it by giving Mike Davis some carries. I think he's a seven-year vet, uh, played with the 49ers, played with the, played with the Bears. Um, and so he, he had a handful of carries the other day. Uh, Curtis Samuel, wide receiver, uh, who was a, a running back at Ohio State, he got some carries the other day. But you don't, you just, you don't replace Christian McCaffrey. He was getting, I think it was 44% of the touches uh, in the first two weeks. So these other guys, you, you're just not going to replace them. So it's the Panthers came into this season as a relatively unsexy team take away Christian McCaffrey and it's really, really unsexy. It's like me looking like, like it's, it's not attractive whatsoever. Um, but, but this, again, this is what Matt Rule does. He takes things that like Temple, Baylor, what, what, are you, what are you getting? He, he takes these pieces, almost a little bit of these misfits and he, and he puts them together. And yeah, I, I don't, I don't think really they were better than the Chargers. They didn't have, they didn't have more talent than the Chargers, but they beat the Chargers and they were actually in their first two games. They could have won both of their first two games against the Raiders and then the Bucks. It was a one possession game in the fourth quarter against the Bucks when Teddy Bridgewater uh, threw an interception in Bucks territory. So um, the one thing about this team right now is while it's not all that sexy, they, it, it, I hate the coach speak, but they are, they are fighting for this guy. And, and I think that's the, really the, the thing to notice in these first three weeks. Mentioning Teddy Bridgewater, I, look, I, I know he's no Kyle Allen who completely uh, messed up the Cardinals last year, uh, as did Christian McCaffrey. Uh, but, but Bridgewater is a veteran. Uh, his, his trending, he was trending up before he, his major injury back in Minnesota. I'm wondering kind of where is he now? He looks like he's been pretty solid uh, through these first three weeks. Yeah, he's, he's solid. I just think, you know, especially with nine years or eight 
years and two games worth of Cam Newton. There's a reason why the Patriots game in a couple of weeks just got flexed into a, a prime, you know, late afternoon slot. Yeah. Um, Cam Newton brings, there's just all the attention, the spotlight, the big plays, the exciting plays. Um, Teddy Bridgewater's not like that. He's kind of a quiet guy. Everyone in the building seems to love him, um, but he's the spotlight really isn't on him. He, he doesn't he doesn't seek it out, um, and he's not he, he doesn't really give you those flashy plays either. Um, I know game manager is a negative connotation, and the Panthers don't want to call him a game manager. But the reason why they lost that Bucks game, which they could have won, is because he he turned it over three times for just the second time in his career. Last week, the reason they won last week. Um, they were dreadful in the red zone. I think they were one and six, one for six in the red zone and then three of 12 on third down. Uh, but the reason they won is because they didn't turn the ball over. So that's that's what Teddy's here to do is to be a really good locker room presence, to make enough plays downfield when they need it, but mostly don't turn the ball over, be smart with the ball and get it to your playmakers. If we flip to the other side of the ball, uh, you speak of turnovers, obviously that's what doomed the Cardinals to their first loss last week. Kyler Murray throwing three interceptions kind of un-Kyler-like on a couple of those plays. Uh, and the Lions did a nice job of, of keeping him relatively in the pocket, not letting him run a ton. Now, I know the Panthers last year made Kyler's life miserable in a lot of ways, had a ton of sacks in that game. This year, the Panthers have two sacks. You know, how does that defense kind of account for Kyler, uh, especially understanding that, like with most players, he's going to be anxious to kind of bounce back from what he did last week? Yeah, if you look at that film from last year, you'll see like Luke Keekley, Mario Addison, Gerald McCoy. Like, so like, can you name anyone on that defense that's still around? I think it's Trey Boston, it's Brian Burns. It's such a new defense that I think it, it's really hard to compare last year versus this year. And so it's it's not just a new defense schematically, but, but personnel wise too. I think Brian Burns is really starting to come into his own. Um, and uh, I think, you know, Kyler's, Kyler's certainly going to be a different challenge than the, than the first three quarterbacks they faced when you look at uh, Derek Carr, Tom Brady, uh, and Justin Herbert. Those, uh, this, is, this is definitely going to be um, a much different challenge for these guys. Bill, I really appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you again, Darren.